All right, welcome. We're in part five of the hero's journey and we're going to jump right in. This is called the jungle and this is the thick, wet uh, canopy, vines hanging down part of our hero's journey because we know that beyond this jungle is the mountain that we need to climb to find the prize that we're looking for. And we're going to talk about what that prize is. But for now, I want you to get ready to hack your way through this jungle. Now, one of the greatest things is that we have, that you have companions. I'm going to do this with you and share with you about this jungle. And I'm going to encourage you to really take a look at your experience, the emotion and feeling that you have around this, because this is going to be probably a very challenging part of the hero's journey. I shared with you that were moments in my life where there were absolute wake up calls like cold water in the face. And when I did this part of my journey, I happened to do it with in a seminar that was designed around excellence and leadership. And I was really called forth to take a look at the deepest part of what motivated me. So the jungle represents all of our belief systems and all of our uh, programming from the past. There are many people who say that most of the decisions in our life are actually made by a subconscious experience that we carry around with us. Most of it is learned from a time in our past. Now, this is like, much of this is like rocks in a backpack. All of these past experiences that we have that weigh us down are in this invisible backpack on our back as we try to hack our way through the jungle. What we want to do here in this part of the hero's journey is to reach back and to start to let go of some of those rocks. Would you be willing to do that? What it will require from you is absolute honesty. What will require from you is a willingness to look at yourself and what runs you. What, where are these decisions that we make in life that we know better, but we still seem to be on a rail and on a track and keep going back and doing the same stuff that might not serve us. And so this is, is moving our way through the jungle. So my experience has been that every event from our past that has an emotional element to it has an influence on how we view the world. As my friend Brian Clemmer used to say, from Clemmer and Associates, a great trainer and a great entrepreneur, used to say it was like we were wearing glasses that we didn't even know we were wearing. That we look at the world through lenses of the color of those glasses and that we see everything. And that, what, what those lenses are, is our programming and belief systems. So as we work deeply in through, our, through the jungle here, what you want to think about is those things that have the greatest emotional impact from your past for you. Things that have really uh, influenced the way that you relate to other people and influenced in the way that you relate to yourself. You see, none of us were born with a lack of courage or a lack of honesty. None of us were born non-creative. None of us were born non-expressive. None of us were born this way, but we learned all of this stuff as we go along. And so what I'd like you to do is look at what it is from your past that you have the strongest emotional attachment to that may hold you back. There's many great things from our past that serve us. But the jungle here is a representation of what may hold you back. Now, as I'm talking to some of you, I know that many of you didn't have the greatest childhood. Some of you uh, had horrendous experiences happen to you, whether uh, it was uh, something a sexual nature or whether it was something around uh, physical violence or whether it was something around being ignored. Or maybe it was just something about the fact as we grew up, we were beginning to separate 
ourselves from our parents, but we had this feeling. And I think what happens to us as children, that we're survival-based mechanisms. And as we're hacking our way through this jungle, we start to realize that we wanted to survive, so what we needed to do is design ourselves around what the people that helped us survive wanted and needed and tried to please them, or at least it wasn't pleasing them. It was not to get in trouble. It was not to, see, uh, not to feel that separation. And so as parents, we realize that we often use uh, certain ways of manipulating our kids, and we were manipulated in the same way. Don't you feel guilty? Don't you feel shame? Why would you do that? Why would you think that way? All of that stuff. So you bring up something from your past that was influential and the emotion that goes with it. And I know that's really hard as you sit here going, I don't want to think about that or I've already done, I've already thought about that and that's put to bed. That doesn't influence me any longer. But here's what I know, working with the 40,000 people that I've worked with, that an incident from your childhood could influence you for the rest of your life. My incident from my childhood was around the fact that I was physically abused for not performing in school. That I really got a good whack uh, uh, often for not living up to what uh, my parents felt was my potential. And so a lot of resistance started to come into my life around learning. A lot of resistance as I started to develop my own personality. I felt a lot of pain because I did want my parents' love and approval. But on the other side, I felt like I had to make a stand. And so this was a conflicting experience for me. What ended up happen happening until I got to uh, the later years of my college and graduate school until I really loved what I did. I was a terrible student. I switched completely when I started to do this, do my uh, work in psychology and really learned that. That was my path. But still, it seemed like all my relationships really weren't that trusting, weren't that close. And I had a real image of how I was a tough guy or how I knew what the right thing was. Now, you may not relate to this at all of what I'm saying, or some of you may relate to it. But this moment, what I'd like you to do is take a look at an experience from your life. Simply take a deep breath and go, do I want to hang on to this non-forgiveness? Do I want to hang on to this pain? Do I want to hang on to this influence? And begin to just make decisions about designing your life around the qualities that serve you rather than having your past design your life. There's a great man in one of the organizations that I worked with, Thomas Wilhite, and he used to joke with all of us when we were in training as facilitators for, these, for the seminar company. He used to say, I know, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a clairvoyant. I can tell what your future is. And we all kind of lean forward and go, well, Mr. Wilhite, tell us what our future is. And he said, it's the same as your past. <laughs> Which wasn't a very, uh, which wasn't what we wanted to hear. But what he meant, of course, is that until we're really willing to wrestle with our past, we will recreate everything that we're done, we've done over and over and over and over again. Now the circumstances will be different, and the people will be different, but uh, uh, underneath it will be kind of the same pattern. And how do you break that pattern? Well, you get honest with yourself. You can take out a journal and you can start writing all of this stuff down and just let it flow and allow yourself to feel it. Also, what you can do is you can start to make decisions about all of this feeling and experience. Do you want to continue to be a victim to your own thinking and your own way you see this? Or do you want to step into a place called 
responsible. And this is every vine we hit, every tree, everything we move through is all of these decisions. And we think they're so real. But here's the truth of the matter. That facts happen to us. The fa Things happen to us, and we'll call those facts. There's nothing we can do about going back and changing facts. But what we can do is change the meaning that we give to them. This is the hero's journey. That you look at, what did you make that mean? So if I was uh, uh, disappointed, if I disappointed my parents, it meant that I was a bad person. I made that decision. They didn't. And I carried some of that along with me until I was able to confront it and go, do I want to continue this experience? Do I want to continue being this way? Very powerful and very emotional. But this was a decision I made. So you are in the same place watching this right now to make some decisions about how much you're going to allow all of those things from the past to create your future. And what I suggest to you is remember the best and take the best with you and begin to recontextualize those things that were uh, that have a powerful negative influence. And now that is the hero's journey. Thank God we can do it together. Thank God we have other people. And I want to tell you something. As I said earlier, I worked with 40,000 people. And I'll tell you that everyone, to one degree or another, to one experience or another, carries around these events in life. And the idea now that you're on a hero's journey and you can begin to look at a different way of looking things. That we see on the other side. Now we're beginning to see the light on the other side of this jungle. And that light represents a different choice in our life about how we're going to see ourselves and how we're going to see other people. A choice in our life that we're going to have extraordinary relationships. A choice in our life that we're going to have some peace and fulfillment. A choice in our life that we'll have a career that serves us. A choice in our life that we will make the difference for other people that we were born to make. From the smallest thing to the largest thing. Those are choices that come when we decide to take a rock out of the backpack. And so now we're going to break out of this jungle. The next challenge we have in part six is going to be one of the biggest challenges in our life. And we're going to look at that and we're going to go to battle against that. And we're going to uh, take a look at creating the life that we want. This one big challenge and obstacle that most of us carry. So that's going to be part six. And that will be called the battle. So get ready, sharpen your sword, and we're going to have a great time with this. But we're also going to continue on this way of being challenged. This is Patrick Dean for Seminar Systems for Performance Mentoring and Coaching. And uh, thanks for being on this journey with me. With me, And I'm w on this journey with you. So I will meet you in part six as we kind of get ourselves, clean ourselves off from getting through this jungle. And we'll move on to part six. Six.